One of the biggest fears that people have when it comes to retirement is the idea of running out of money. Imagine being in your 70s, 80s, and all of a sudden, there's no money left for you to draw upon. You had saved all your life and now it's all gone. How do you sustain your lifestyle when you're looking at social security maybe being the only support? Maybe it's having to go back with your children and having them help support you. Today, what we're gonna get into is the five costly retirement mistakes to avoid at all costs. So the number one mistake is really just discounting the importance of retirement planning. A lot of people don't get started until it's too late. The best time to start is today if you haven't started already. Know that retirement's coming and start to understand what are the needs in your lifestyle today versus the wants of your lifestyle because that's gonna help you understand your budget, the money coming in, the money going out. But you also not only wanna understand that today, but what does that look like in the future? Because you need to start planning for what are my fixed costs so I can guarantee that those are covered at all times. And then what's the money that I wanna have fun with? How much do I wanna build into my lifestyle so that I can enjoy and not just survive through retirement? Retirement planning requires discipline. It requires discipline and savings, but also requires an understanding and education on the social security system, understanding the ins and outs of that, and you know, really trying to navigate that, or for some people, maybe not even relying on it at all. And really starting to think about, if you're young enough, can I set myself up for financial independence and really understanding what that means. At the end of the day, you wanna be able to create a vision for yourself for your retirement that's something you look forward to and something that you enjoy. And if you really love your job, do you have to retire at all, right? If you've created this kind of lifestyle where you love Love what you do you're not really retiring from anything you're creating value and still continuing to put that out into the world so second there's certain pitfalls that a lot of people fall into when it comes to retirement planning first pretending that retirement isn't going to arrive making that huge mistake I, I know many people that say I'm gonna work until I die but is that really true are you able to truly work until you die and for most people the answer is no that also may be something that you think about today like maybe you don't want to leave your job maybe you do want to continue to work as long as you can but that doesn't mean to not start planning today because you may have one idea today 10 years from now that idea could be completely different in what your values are and what you really want to be able to accomplish in your life. Secondly is mismanaging the tax advantage saving. A lot of people that we see will have retirement plans that they're really just focused on 401ks, IRAs, kind of pre-tax environment vehicles. Today, as it stands in 2023, we're in the lowest income tax bracket of our lifetime. And looking at that today, we have to also take into account government spending and how is the government going to foot those bills by tax collection. So if they need to collect taxes and the vast majority of wealth is in pre-tax vehicles, IRAs, 401ks, where are they going to get that money? They're going to start taxing those distributions and at what rate? Today, we know what the income tax rate is, but 20, 30 years from now, we really have no idea. So the chances that they go down versus going up, I think it's much more likely that tax rates will start to climb in the future rather than going down. And then lastly, if we look back to 2008, emotions drove the market. So many, many people were in investments in the stock market. And what happened during that year in 2008, stock market fell at some points around 50%. It closed down around 40%, but intra-year it was down about 50%. And the question is, if you have a million dollar portfolio, and you're looking at that value drop each and every month. It's just going down and down and down. That million dollars turns into $700,000, $500,000. What is the likelihood that you're able to stay invested if those are the only dollars you had set aside, right? What is the likelihood? And for most, they didn't stay invested they pulled out of the market because fear drove them to. And they were never able to catch the rebound that happened in the market the years after. And so they locked in all those losses. At that same time in 2008, people that were retired are also losing value in their 401ks and the job market's tight. There's no jobs for them to go back to. 
Financially, it was devastating to so many people. And so if you haven't prepared both correlated and non-correlated assets in your plan, you're setting yourself up for these kinds of mistakes, these kinds of failures that can happen. So I talked about before that the third thing is going to be understanding social security, right? And when you take a look at social security, you really need to understand how you're claiming social security. You could start taking social security at 62 years old, but you're taking it at a deep reduction. Not only that, you're limited to how much money you can earn outside of what you're bringing in from that social security. You start to look at, okay, well, I could take it at 62, but when can I take it and not have to worry about how much money I earn? Well, that's your full retirement age. And that's different for most people. It's, it's somewhere between 66 and a half to 67 years old. So if you're looking in that range and it'll be different based on the time that you were born, 67 years old being full retirement age, what that says is I can start claiming social security I can get that full paycheck and I don't have to pay any of it back no matter what I earn on top of that social security. And that might be something that you want to look at. There's tools that can help you evaluate this. But if you delay, the way social security is currently set up, if you delay each year past your full retirement age, you're going to get an 8% increase on what you would receive. So 8% each and every year until you reach age 70. Looking at these tools and being able to evaluate where social security is gonna be, what your thought is on the government's ability to pay social security can all impact the way that you claim social security and the money that you start to draw from it. The fourth thing we wanna talk about is this need for financial independence. The idea that you're going to save your way totally into prosperity is really kind of silly. So what you have to start thinking about is, do I have the time frame to not only set up my accounts, right? Set up my investment portfolio and my non-qualified assets, but what sorts of things can I be looking at to generate income when it comes to retirement? What sort of passive investments, whether it's a silent partner in a business or some sort of real estate transaction, what can I do that will create a passive income for me long-term that I can rely on when it comes to retirement. If you start thinking about financial independence, rather than just making enough and saving enough to reach retirement, it's a totally different game for you. And those are the people that not only set up themselves for financial independence, they set up their families for generational wealth. And the fifth point that we want to touch on is this idea of building a life that you don't need to retire from. Setting yourself up so that you're in a position where you truly enjoy what you're doing and you don't have to stop doing what you're doing. Or maybe you're in a career now, but you've found something else that really sparks your interest and you think you can create value for other people. And so it's not an idea of retiring to sit on the couch or retiring to be on a desert island somewhere, but it could be the idea of retiring and retiring from one and what am I retiring to? So the idea of going to that next career and we see lots of people because let's face it, as we are aging, our, our mortality is growing and growing. People are living longer. So this idea of being able to retire at 65 and, and then what? So you gotta take a look at not just building you know, for yourself and your career, but also building for your health and how you maintain your health to maintain your lifestyle. Because what's the point in living to 120 if we don't have good quality of life? So looking to build those things for yourself builds a life that you don't need to retire from. If you'd like to learn more about securing your retirement and avoiding these costly mistakes that come up, click in the link below in the description box, set up a free consultation with one of our advisors, and they'll start to walk you through a game plan to help you map out what your retirement could look like. And if you've made it this far in this video and you like what you saw, give it a like, share it with somebody that needs to hear this information.